o'clock hour, and it has been too long. Tim Brando, Fox Sports, has been a great friend of the show, and it's great to have him on again. He has Kansas and Kansas State, which has Big 12 championship game implications. Tim Brando with us with Paul Craig and David Smoke. How you been, fella? Wonderful. I got out of the frozen north and uh, <laughs> had a pretty busy week last week, uh, Fellas, I'm looking forward to doing some Big 12 basketball, I got to tell you, and uh, that'll, wow. that'll start pretty soon, I'm told. But um, I spent, uh, let's see, I flew out uh, Tuesday last week to uh, New York, New Jersey, Newark, had um, Seton Hall in Iowa on Wednesday night in hoops and the Gavit Games, and Thursday I had St. John's in Nebraska. Flew out Friday morning early into sub-zero temperatures in Minnesota. <laughs> we got we got the uh, we got the Floyd of Rosedale Trophy taken care of, and those those Iowa Hawkeyes are probably going to be playing for a Big Ten title with the worst offense in Division One college football <laughs> because their defense is also maybe the best defense in Division One college football. We got that taken care of, and. And now, now home for a few days, going to have our Thanksgiving Wednesday before heading off to uh, mini Manhattan on Thursday. So that's, that's my world and welcome to it. Tim, <laughs> you know, Kirk Ferentz and you've worked with him, you know, doing these games. If I could go there and tell him you can get in doc Brown's time machine and go back to <laughs> 1925 and be a football coach, would he be like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> you know, I know, listen, especially younger fans and younger broadcasters feel as you do. I, I get that. And, and, and look, I would love, and Spencer Tillman spent a lot of time in our game saying, you know, you got a really gifted back right there. Okay. This kid, Caleb Johnson is really, uh, you know, he, he may be a, um, you know, one of those once every decade running backs. you know, let him, let him catch a pass every now and then, you know, just have, have him as a, a second or third option on the on the read, you know, as opposed to just lining up in the eye formation and 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 playing small ball, which is really all Iowa does. And 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 Spencer, but I, but I got to say this to you as well, and this is um, a byproduct, maybe to some degree, of my age, and and maybe a little bit of wisdom too. Okay, I, I'd like to say with age comes comes some wisdom. We can all adapt and adjust. And, and I think that in, in Kirk Ferentz's case, and especially in a place like Iowa, where, where conference titles for years and years and years have always mattered, and, and, and if, you could not, if you could not win the overall national championship in that state, no big deal. We, we want conference titles in Rose Bowl. Okay? That's what the Big Ten was founded on for many, many years. Long before he started coaching, as a head coach, okay, when he was working for Hayden Fry. I, I think that that's the mindset. And his administration, fellas, the people that run that university, are really comfortable with that mindset. And that's his mindset, all right? And it's tried and true. He's got, you know, Phil Parker's got to be the best defensive coordinator, maybe in the modern history of college football. Just look at their defensive numbers. And um, it was one of those games, I don't know if, and listen, I, you're in the Big 12, there are a lot of other games to watch besides the one we had. But, you know, Spencer and I just kind of looked at each other in the timeout, and I said, you know, this, this game has been clean. We haven't had a turnover yet. And I'm guessing every time I do an Iowa game, somebody asks me, well, what do you think Iowa's chances are? And I, and I say, well, how many points do you think the defense can score? <laughs> <laughs> and, and literally two plays after I said that Jack Campbell picked off the pass it should have been a touchdown they, they said he stepped out of bounds but he didn't but because he stepped out of bounds it was more of a slow death for Minnesota they wound up losing by a field goal with just a few seconds left and no time on the clock if he had scored the touchdown they would have at least had an opportunity to tie the game and more time on the clock and maybe a timeout or two but I, I'm with you it is outdated what they're doing, but in Iowa, and it's at least with his administration, with the people that govern uh, and make the decisions as to who's going to be the head football coach there, they're satisfied with that. And I will tell you, there's not, not a finer man I've ever met. No, 
no no better gentleman in, in college football than Kirk Ferentz. But he's got an issue here. And part of that issue is, of course, because his son, Brian, is the offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. And how this thing untangles itself over time, and I guess it probably will whenever there's a change with uh, the president or the AD, they're, they're, you know, they, you'll either have to adjust or, or it'll all come to an end. But, boy, they, they do know who and what they are. You know what I mean? They, they have no uh, inhibitions about, you know, what their, their modus operandi is. And, and I, in today's world, I sort of find that refreshing. In my own maybe baby boomer, you know, uh, they, you know my, my own generation's way. I, I think it's, it's kind of refreshing to see, you know, a school and a team that plays to, you know, what its image is. Now, the fans are feeling differently now. And, and ultimately, they may, they may force some change with regard to the way they govern the program. And so it's a great question, okay? And one that I cannot deliver a strong answer on because I, I really do respect Kirk Ferentz and what he's done over, you know, a quarter of a century, really. Tim, I uh, saw your latest top 10 rankings, Timmy B's top 10 that you put out every week. Uh, Georgia, Ohio mm-hmm. State, TCU, and Michigan, your top four. Obviously, two and four are going to play here uh, in you know, at the end of the week. But that number three team there, Tim, the Horn Frogs, find a way to get it done in Waco. Uh, last second, hurry up, field goal. Your thoughts on, on Sonny Dykes and the good times just continuing to roll in Fort Worth, Texas? Well, talk about know who you are. <laughs> they know who they are. And, uh, and I, yeah, I moved them up a spot. Uh, they deserve to move up a spot over Michigan in my mind because of what they've done on the road the last two weeks. You know, uh, the pundits, uh, all of whom you know who they are, right. okay, of the mainstream media. Oh, Texas is going to clip them. Texas is going to get them. Oh, well, well, you know, Baylor is revenge. Baylor is going to get them. This is too much. <laughs> And, of course, the committee will say, I'm sure, well, we'd love to move them past Michigan, but, you know, they just fall behind in all these games. <laughs> if, if the name by that number was Texas or OU, they would be number three. They should, they should be number three. Michigan was lucky to win that game against Illinois. I mean, out and out lucky to win that game. TCU has earned the right to move up a spot, in my mind. But, um, you know, what you're doing – at the end of these games to win is not, I mean, that's not a liability. That's an attribute. They should be rewarded for what they've done under the gut. And uh, we were watching that game, our entire crew. We were waiting, of course, to come on the air afterwards and uh, at, uh, at um, Minnesota. And, you know, we, we basically were predicting what was going to happen. You know, and the two-point conversion, by the way, it, it, it was right there. It dropped it. And the question would be then, what were they, would they get the ball back? And once it became obvious that, that Baylor was, was going to be conservative, they opened the door for them to get the ball back. And, uh, you know, Max Duggan this year, I mean, <laughs> if there's a guy you're going to pick for a final drive, that's the guy you're going to pick. Um, and that's another thing, by the way. Max, Max Duggan right now, is my number one pick for the Heisman. Mm. Uh, we're not supposed to tell you who we're going to vote for, and I'm, I don't have to vote till the end, and I won't until the championship Saturday. But, I mean, who's done more for his team to win than Max Duggan this year? Uh, but the hype, obviously, for Stroud this week, if he has a big game, um, Corm, if, if, if he played, but I think he's hurt and won't be able to play for Michigan. But uh, in the Caleb Williams, uh, overreaction to, you know, what was a track meet. You know, the only difference between Caleb, Caleb Williams and Dorian Thompson Robinson this past Saturday was DTR through interceptions that Caleb didn't throw. I mean, that's why USC won that game. But Duggan has been money. Okay, he's been the best player in the biggest moments of this college football season, in my opinion. Tim, I have a vote, and, and it's an honor to have one. And I, I know that there'll be other players around the Big 12 and around America that get a lot of attention this week, but he did. I mean, he had a scramble in that last drive that got out of bounds that saved the clock yeah. or a spike. And, yeah. um, and, maybe, and then, of course, he had the quarterback draw that put him in position. But, 
Yeah, he wasn't yeah. flawless. He didn't put up, but he had 300 and some yards against the a Baylor defense. And you're right, he just kind of has that it in his neck factor. And I agree with you. I I don't know who I'd vote for today, but I don't have to. But he has to be in that conversation. Right, and, and the fact that he's not even mentioned that much, okay, just tells you the bias that's out there. Okay, it's um, and I love having a vote. Don't get me wrong; I'm honored to have a Heisman vote. But the Heisman voting process and who's been winning the Heisman uh, in in the last uh, 15 or so years has lost a lot of its luster for me because it's so highly predictable in my mind. Okay, uh, it, it really sort of doesn't matter what happens all season. It matters what happens in big games that get high ratings at the end of the year. I mean, that's that's basically what it's come down to. And that's really unfortunate in my mind. Um, the, the, the best player, the most outstanding player for an entire season is sort of the way I look at this award. I, I still have that view of it. Um, and he's been making plays all year. Think about it. He lost his job to Chandler Morris after Chandler, you know, had that great game against two Baylor a year ago. That was the game Spencer and I had in, um, Fort Worth last year. It wound up costing Baylor an opportunity to be in the college football playoff when you look back on it. This was supposed to be their revenge game. And 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 Baylor played well. Look, Blake Chapin, I thought, had a great game. I mean, a great game. And uh, I, I texted my friends, uh, Brock Hewitt and Jason Benetti, both of whom I, I think the world of, and Jason's a, a, just an extraordinary young play-by-play guy and a magnificent story. Uh, if you haven't read it, you should, uh, about Jason. He's a wonderful guy and has uh, overcome so much in his life. I-, I thought that they chronicled and documented uh, the game beautifully. And uh, at one point, Brock even mentioned that Blake was from my hometown, which I got a thrill out of hearing <laughs> because I'm from my hometown. And, and uh, his his uncle is Hal Sutton, who's a dear friend of mine, and his father is a friend of mine. Uh, as well as his wife, you know, Hal's sister. Um, I, I didn't think that Baylor really lost the game. I, I thought TCU just went out, played like champions, and won it. Okay, ba- Baylor's in great shape for the future. I, I really believe that. Uh, you know, I had them. I had Baylor being in TCU's position if you go back to the summer. You yep. guys know that. Yeah, a lot of uh, us did. Yeah, TCU, TCU is performing the exploits that I thought would be Baylor. But the reason they're doing it is because Max Duggan has just been exemplary, okay? Uh, Johnson is a big-time receiver. Uh, Baylor doesn't have anybody like him. Not many teams have anyone quite like Johnson. Uh, having him healthy is important. They didn't have Darius Day, who, who I think is their second-best go-to guy in the game against Baylor. Uh, another Louisiana kid, by the way. Uh, I, I, I think that TCU not only can get to this playoff, but they can win it. I mean, they can win the national championship. They are that good. There are teams out there that they just match up beautifully with. I think the best thing that could happen to TCU right now is to play anybody outside the Big 12. Yeah. Because the Big 12 12 knows how to defend them. But, But Duggan has just made enough plays to overcome, you know, the great scouting reports that have been out there. That game was the best game I've seen all year. Uh, I just thought it was a, you know, I, I thought the TCU K State game we had uh, about a month ago uh, in in Fort Worth was when I really felt like, my God, this is incredible what I'm seeing here in this second half because K State lit them up in the first half. But but uh, our, a possible rematch is going to be off the chart if that happens between those two teams. And so if TCU does get to the playoffs then I think they've really earned it. And if they have to beat K-State twice to get there, I mean, anybody thinks that they're going to roll over them just because of the name of the school they're playing against? Forget about it. I mean, TCU is a legitimate national championship potential team if they can beat K-State twice. Tim, I think that uh, I saw some 
college football pundits kind of saying this weekend was the reason that, you know, the expanded playoff is going to make it worse because it's hard to find teams that, you know, are really uh, the elite ones. But to uh, me, uh, it was the inverse in that you're seeing the effects of NIL and the transfer portal and other teams getting deeper and better and getting some of that talent that the other teams used to hoard away because you couldn't leave. And right. that if there were 12 teams in it this week, man, I like how tense I would have been from 11 o'clock in the morning until midnight. Oh, my God. Absolutely. You know, the only people that don't want this, okay, are the elitists that just want to keep it in their private club. You know, the Bamas, the Clemsons, the, you know, the, 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 the Ohio States, you know, that, that, those fan bases, they, they know their percentages are better if there's only four teams. I mean, that's, that's, that's literally it. But what's really amazing to me is how much of the media is so damn lazy, they don't want to have to cover, you know, 12 teams. They, they prefer just having to know something about four teams. And that's where some of that crap comes from. It's also some of the old propaganda that was put out by uh, the college football playoff for so many years saying, oh, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to make the, the regular – the regular season is only going to be enhanced. The whole month of November will go through the roof with more viewership if we have uh, a race for 12 positions rather than four. And as I've stated to you guys many times over, I really think by the time the decision is made to start it, whether it's um, in, in 25 or 26, I think we're going to go to 16, not 12. So get ready for it. Tim, the uh, you, you were talking, if you don't mind, with college basketball with – and Houston's about to be a part of the conference. They're number two. Right. Texas is – or Kansas is four. Texas five or three or four. Baylor's like seven after the loss on Friday to Virginia. Can you imagine that kind of, what it is now, much less what it's going to be in the future, even with Texas leaving? Hey, I'm through the roof about the potential of, uh, of doing Big 12 basketball. I mean, I, I, I am. I've missed it. You know, I haven't done a game at uh, Fog Allen since 2012 when I was still at CBS. Um, I haven't been, you know, any of the Big 12 schools I haven't been to in that long a period of time. And, you know, the level of play uh, is just, I mean, everybody's good. Everybody is good in, in, in Big 12 basketball. And so, and, and, I, and I'm not going to lie, I'll drive to Waco. You know, I'll drive to Fort Worth. Hell, I'll drive to I'll drive to Stillwater. I mean, I enjoy those drives. So it's more convenient for me, too, uh, because I'm traveling, generally speaking, to the Big Ten and the Big East all the time. I do a Pac-12 game here and there, but but rarely. Um, and by the time we get there, I don't know that we'll have the Pac-12 contract or not. They may be on Amazon by that time. I don't know. But uh, I'm thrilled about the potential of, uh, of getting to come in there uh, during the winter and, and, and see – um, you know, Drew's team and, and to, to, to be around college basketball uh, in the Big 12 Conference again. It's the deepest and the best uh, league in America. Has been for probably about a half dozen years. And, um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the game, as you well know. So uh, I'm excited about it. If you don't mind, one final thing. You were talking about how cold it was. What's the <laughs> coldest you've ever been? Do you remember broadcasting a television yeah. game? Yeah, yeah. They, I was called in to do a, a CBS NFL game uh, around uh, 2004 or five. Fred Taylor, I remember, was playing for the Jaguars. My Brunel was still the quarterback. And they were playing the Bengals in Cincinnati. And it was one of those really cold days in Cincinnati you know, with the wind coming off the ri- uh, off the off the river, and, and it was just. And they asked me to do a, a a hit for the NFL today. So, for whatever reason, the producers of the studio show wanted the play-by-play guys to come out and do reports on every game that was going to be on CBS that day. And it was snowing, and it was the wind was probably twenty twenty-five miles per hour. And um, I, they wanted me to do a bit on the different shoes that were going to be worn. So that meant that I had to hold two sets of shoes up. And I remember going out, setting up to do it. It's snowing and it's blow, the wind is blowing. 
and um, uh, I, I could feel my my chin and my uh, uh, nose uh, beginning to freeze over. <laughs> and as I was holding the, <laughs> I'm holding a mic in one hand, and I'm holding the shoes in another hand, and showing the cleats. And when I got done, uh, smoke, I went inside. They had some. Because I had to hurry to the booth. We're gonna, I'm going to be on the air doing the game in like 30 minutes. They had some hot chocolate waiting for me. And I, I guess I got a little lesson in biology. <laughs> I was so cold. This was, was I had five layers on. Okay, five layers. I'm still so frozen that uh, when I took down the hot chocolate, I literally felt the hot chocolate go down my throat and through my veins. I found out that warm, whatever's warm that you take down when you're that cold, and I was probably close to frostbite, you can feel it going through your body. Like, I felt it going down my throat, past my heart, through the chest, down into the... It was like, oh my God. I mean, I don't know what, whatever the tubes are that that stuff goes through, <laughs> I felt I felt it in each individual tube. It was like, <laughs> oh, my God. It was a little bit of a rush. You know, it was kind of like, oh, my God. Now I know. Um, I was told that, um, you know, our bodies were built a certain way, and, and now I now I know it. it was, I was that cold. Yeah. That's the coldest. It, it, people think you're inside of a booth that's protected. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> T Tim. <laughs> Thank you, as always. Can't wait to talk to you. Hopefully, though, the next couple of weeks as we find out evidence and also the college playoff as well. We always appreciate your time. We've missed you on the show. Thank you. Thanks, Smoke. It's always good to be with you, and uh, you guys do a great job. I'm, I'm, I'm always here. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Tim Brando, Fox Sports, and many different stories, including just the college basketball, but also the weekend and his thoughts about Max Duggan and where he is in the conversation. By, by the way, 